Welcome to Affinity. Creative freedom, free forever. Yes, version 3 is out and Affinity Suit is now free forever. I have been using it for a day and in this video I'll share my experience and thoughts. So let's start with the biggest change. From three apps to a single app called Affinity. Consolidating three separate apps into one makes sense and was to be expected that these would merge into one. You can now access all the tools within a single seamless workflow, eliminating the need to switch between applications. The functionality of the previous three apps are now segregated into different personas or CDOs which are directly visible at the top when you see the new version. Being part of Canva now, we also got the Canva AI Studio. I'll talk about that in a minute. Not all studios are shown by default. By clicking on the three dots, you can enable them to show on the top toolbar, reorder them and even create your own studio environment, which is pretty cool. By the way, you don't need to enable it on the toolbar to use them. You can also just click on a studio and the app will switch to that studio. Keep in mind that each studio has its own UI layout. So when you customize one studio with panels and tools you like, it will only affect the active studio. This was somewhat frustrating to me as I prefer to use as much of the same panels for all the studios. There was no easy way of reusing the setup of one studio into another. What I also really like is the possibility to switch the view mode very quickly. In vector view mode, your vectors will stay sharp when you zoom in, whereas in the pixel view, they will get rendered and pixelated. The new logo is always shown on the top left. As the different apps are now one, it is just called Affinity by Canva. They have chosen to use the green tint for the app icon, which makes sense when we look at the color wheel. The good news is that the new app is backwards compatible. It can read files created by version 2. I have not tried to read version 1 files, but I assume this would not be an issue. As there is now one app, the saved files are now saved as .af instead of .af photo or .af designer. With as a result that the files saved with this new version cannot be read by version 2 apps. It would have been great if they had provided the ability to save or export files in the old format, which would allow you to share your work with others who do not want to use this new version. If you're migrating from version 2, here's a quick tip. From the file Import Content menu, use the Affinity 2 menu. This will import all your personal content into this new version. This includes your macro library, assets, brushes and adjustment presets. I'm not sure about the procedural texture presets, so make sure to double check those if you have them. For users of Affinity version 2, the new version will feel familiar with a minimal learning curve. If you were using different personas in version 2, you might wonder where these are. When you select an image layer with the move tool, you get the three other personas from Affinity Photo. The develop, liquify and tone map. The export persona is now available as a studio called Slice. Another option I liked is the mini pop-up with the extra tool options. I believe you can turn this off in the settings, but for me this is a welcome addition. As you might have noticed in the interface, there is now a quick export option on the top right, which is nice. We still got the normal export available from the file menu, but they have refreshed the interface of the export dialog a bit, and as Affinity is part of Canva now, you can also have the option to export directly to Canva. It would have been awesome if you were also able to import from Canva. So besides the user interface, what's new? Let's start with the new filters they have introduced. We got a bloom filter, a glitch filter and a multiband sharpen filter. Let me know in the comments if you want to see a follow up video on these. The pixelate filter is also now a live filter so it's no longer destructive. We also got a very welcome upgrade to gradients. It is now finally possible to add mesh gradients. Gradients can also be anchored to the document, allowing to have a fixed gradient even though you change the object size. Pretty cool. Besides mesh gradients, they also included the possibility to use hatches as a fill. In the swatches panel, you can find a couple of examples. You can adjust the hatches by selecting the gradient tool. One thing I notice is that you cannot change the thickness of the lines. If you do know how to change this, please share in the comments. We also got two new brushes, the adjustment and the live filter brush. These are not very special in my opinion. 
it is just a quick way to add an adjustment or a filter and directly mask it. In the adjustments, they have added two new adjustments, tone compression and the tone stretch, which are available if you're working on HDR images. What's also new is the pigment blend mount. Not sure what this exactly does, but it looks like it only affects primary colors. The last new feature I want to highlight is the trace image function, which can be found under the vector menu. This has been a long outstanding request from users. I haven't extensively tested it yet, but it kind of works. Definitely not something to get excited about. It's nice to have this feature instead of trying other apps or tools online to get a simple trace. As they advertise, Affinity is free, which is an amazing deal, but it's also not the complete truth. The AI features available in Canva AI Studio do need a Canva subscription. The only free feature is the Select Object tool. I'm guessing the only reason why this is free is because this was also available in version 2, so to keep the community happy, they kept it free. If we check the docs, it states that it uses credits. However, when I check the Canva pricing tab, the whole AI usage is a bit unclear. It states high access and when digging deeper we get even more confused. The only useful information they provide is that they will notify you if you reach your limit. How much that will cost and so on is very unclear. The good part is that the on-device ML tools in Affinity do not use credit as it seems. To see what on-device ML tools we have we can open up the settings and under machine learning tools we can see the available tools. The depth estimation, colorization and super resolution are behind a paywall. I can understand the cost for the cloud tools, but asking a subscription to the local models is, in my opinion, not done. The free model is nice, but as we know, if something is free, you are the product. Even though Serif tries to stay the cool kid, the legal agreements tell otherwise. We will just have to see how this will develop in the future. I'm guessing that more and more new features will be behind the paywall. But to be honest, the Canva pricing is not so crazy as Adobe for now. And you do get a lot for your money. If you're already a Canva user, having Affinity for free is an awesome deal. I hope you liked this video and thanks again for tuning in. Let me know in the comments what tutorials you would like to see using Affinity. And don't forget to hit the like and subscribe buttons before you leave. Until the next video.